Hey guys, welcome to another RL Craft video. In this video, I will be talking about the top 30 mounts in all of RL Craft. I will explain how to tame or acquire the mounts, how to utilize the mount's strength or use its ability, and any other miscellaneous details about each mount. I rank the mounts based off of a few factors to determine the mount's overall usefulness. Combat utility, convenience, speed, and tankiness were all taken into consideration. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off at number 30, we have the Death Worm. Many RL Craft players do not know that you can actually mount Death Worms, even wild ones, if you hold two fishing rods in your hands. One in your main hand and one in your off hand. All you need to do is right click the Death Worm and you are riding it. While riding the Death Worm, it can't attack you. You can hatch a Death Worm by throwing a Death Worm egg just like you would throw a normal egg, and it will take one in game day before the Death Worm grows into an adult, but it can still be mounted even as a baby. The death worm that you hatch will not attack you or follow you for that matter, but it will patrol a 50 block radius of where it was hatched, attacking any hostile mob that it comes in contact with. This all seems pretty cool though, so why are death worms at number 30? Well, riding death worms actually can often get you trapped under blocks, leading to potential death. Also, the death worms move really slowly, and while they will attack any hostile mob you get close to, the death worms are very vulnerable to enemy attacks. There is even a rare bug that will cause the death worm to break your world while riding it. But I think it is patched in the newest version of RLCraft. I did not do enough testing to know for sure though. Number 29. Moving up the list to the first mount better than a death worm, horses and mules. Death Worms are certainly cool and can help in combat more than these mounts, but the fact that your game can break when riding a Death Worm, according to the info I could find while researching, puts it at the bottom of the mount tier list. Mules can carry chests and transport you better than Death Worms as well. I don't recommend actually taming these mounts in our Railcraft since there is little point and much better things you could be doing, but these mounts are safer than Death Worms and can potentially aid you in early game, especially mules for carrying loot. Number 28, the Hippocampus. The Hippocampus is the fastest water mount in all of our aircraft and has great handling. The problem though is that the mount is easily killable by not only enemies but also yourself, so fighting on top of one of these is a terrible idea. Another drawback is that keeping one of these long term is really difficult, as it can't soul bind and might as well move backwards on land. These hippocampus are great for early game exploration when you find an ocean and could really use a port city, but you can only tame this mount with sponges or kelp, and kelp sadly does not exist in RL craft. I believe it was removed to avoid the lag it can cause when it breaks. This makes hippocampus not very viable since you usually don't get sponge until at least mid game, and in end game you most likely will go with one of the other mounts that I will talk about later down this list. Number 27, the Strider. As cool as a tall alien water demon sounds, this mount is slow and only effective against one enemy at a time in combat. Its F ability will pick up and paralyze a single target close to it, dealing small damage over time. The strider can be tamed with aquatic treats that are made with cooked fish and bones. The best thing about a strider in my opinion is the fact that melee enemies cannot attack you too easily while riding one of these. The striders have decent HP and riding one of these things is less clunky than you would think when looking at them. Number 26, the Iore. The Iore is the lowest ranked underwater lycanite mount on the list. The mount works perfectly fine as a water breathing effect, just like all underwater mounts in the game, but the mount has low HP and isn't the most useful for underwater combat compared to the other mounts. Like the Strider, you tame the mount with aquatic treats and then mount it with a saddle. This is the last time I will say this during the video, but all lycanite mounts should be soul bound if you want them to be able to be resummoned. You soul bind a mount by right clicking it with a soul stone in your main hand, and a soul stone is made with a soul gazer, which is made with 4 bone, 4 gold, and a diamond, as well as 4 diamond and 4 ender pearls surrounding that soul gazer. You open up your bestiary menu where your summonable pets are by pressing B. The Eore has a ranged attack that makes it decent if you have no gear, but it hits really soft. The penetration 2 effect it places on enemies is not enough to make up for its lack of damage. If you are still at the point where you need penetration on enemies, you would much prefer a harder hitting underwater mount instead. Number 25, the Amphitheer. One of my personal favorite mounts. The Amphitheer is truly unique. You have to right click the mount with an empty main hand and you can find these flying mounts only in lush jungle biomes. This mount is fast and will run from you though, so getting on one can be tough. 
When you finally do right click it with an empty hand, the Amphitheer will attack you over and over until it is finally tamed. The mount hits very soft though, so even if you are just an iron armor you should survive, and you can always block its attacks with a shield if you don't want to take your chances. The mount flies very simply compared to other mounts, going in the direction you aim your mouse cursor. You can also hold space to make it rise faster. Point your mouse up to move up, and point it down to move down. You should land the mount on the ground rather than dismount it midair though, because remounting the beast can be tough if it's airborne. The Amphitheer is amazing though, and is about twice as fast as a normal flying mount such as the Rock, and over long distances is even actually faster than a Maroc, making the mount the fastest flying mount overall in RLcraft. So why is this mount so low on my list? Well, the mount cannot be soulbound and is practically useless in combat. Plus, the mount has low HP and is targeted by other hostile creatures in the game. The mount also cannot be made passive or told to sit, and on rare occasions it even bugs out and disappears. But one thing is for sure, this mount is beautiful and fun. I recommend every RLcraft player ride one of these at least once throughout their journeys. Moving on to number 24, we have the Bar Guest. This mount is a middle of the pack generic ground mount, so it can be hard to see why this mount is good, but the mount is super reliable. You tame bar guests with beast treats. Like other land mounts, the mount can also be ridden on the water by spam jumping if you need to. This mount can protect you in combat with its fast attacks, and this mount can make enemies bleed by landing on them with its F ability. Overall, this mount is a solid one if you have no other choices, but its low HP and generic speed landed it this low on the list. Sometimes a little ground movement is all you need to survive in this dangerous world though, and bar guests can fit that bill. Next on our list at number 23, we have the Pinky. This beast can be found in the end and the nether, and can be tamed with the demon treats. This mount is very similar to the bar guest. Why is the pinky better though? Well, the pinky attacks faster, hits harder, and grants the rider full fire resistance. Yep, you can swim in lava while riding this bad boy. You will usually have a dragon's eye by the time you find one of these, but in case you don't, you now have a strong and aggressive mount that you can ride into lava and battle with. You can also breed pinkies by having the pinkies defeat passive animals. For example, if two pinkies defeat two jousts, sheep, arisaurs, etc., they will make a tamed baby pinky. You can create pinky farms this way, but it would take a long time and a lot of effort. Number 22, the Mog. This mount can be tamed with beast treats and is basically just a bulkier bar guests. This mount slows enemies when it dives on top of them and also takes no fall damage when using its F ability, which makes it leap forward. Number 21, the Ferradon. This mount also is tamed with beast treats. Its ability applies weakness to enemies hit, but the best thing about Ferradons that places it higher on the list compared to bar guests and mogs is the fact that Ferradons are more ruthless in combat. From testing, the Ferradons defeated more zombies and skeletons on its own compared to the previously mentioned beast mounts. This was most likely due to the mount applying weakness to enemies so they dealt less damage to the Ferradon, allowing it to fight for longer. Number 20, the Warg. This mount, like the Mog, Ferradon, and Barghest, also can be tamed with Beast Streets. This mount paralyzes enemies. The difference with Wargs is that the Wargs Leap is actually a really long and fast one, and the Wargs deal a bit more DPS than the other mounts due to this speed. Wargs are absolute units of a mount, the Sven Doggos of RLcraft, in other words. Number 19, the Eyewig. This mount is surprisingly useful as a land mount. You tame these bugs with Arthropod Treats and their ranged attack can help you against melee enemies. What makes these mounts so useful though is the fact that these mounts are also amazing swimmers, and you can attack enemies really smoothly while on top of this mount, unlike many other land mounts. I was surprised to see how great this mount really is, and it helped me look at arthropods and RLcraft in a completely new light. Number 18, the Thresher. You tame Threshers with aquatic treats. Water exploration can yield a lot of good things, so having a strong water mount can be extremely useful. Threshers certainly fit into the useful category. Threshers pull in enemies with a powerful whirlpool attack and deal tremendous damage. You are pretty much riding a tank fused with the Loch Ness monster underwater. You can't really hit enemies yourself, but enemies can't really hit you, and your mount is defeating just about everything for you. With one of these things going underwater, even when undergeared shouldn't be a problem. Number 17. The best underwater mount from testing, the Roa. The Roa is basically a Thresher, but more convenient. The Roa can use its Whirlpool ability even more times than the Thresher without running out of energy. The Roa also is smaller, so you can see around it better when riding it. 
Plus, the rower hits just as hard as the thresher. You are riding on a shark with the powers of Poseidon just about. The only reason why these two mounts are at 17 and 18 is because these mounts do not help you at all on land, and you will be on land the majority of your time in RLcraft. If only the rowers you tamed during the Sharknado event would stay as flying mounts after you tame them, that would be quite something. Number 16, the Hippogriff. The Hippogriff ranks higher than a lot of mounts listed solely because of its ability to fly. You tame a Hippogriff by dropping rabbit's feet near the Hippogriff, and after eating a few of the rabbit's feet, it will become tamed. Unlike the Amphiphere, however, the Hippogriff is less buggy and is more practical. You can place a chest, armor, and need a saddle for the Hippogriff, but the mount will stay wherever you dismount it, will not get attacked by hostiles, and is easier to land and control. With default controls, you rise with space, fall with X, and dismount with the crouch key. The Hippogliff is a solid and standard flying mount in our aircraft. Not being able to soul bind it can be scary, but for exploration and aerial combat, the mount does what it needs to do. Number 15, the Salamander. You tame salamanders with beast streets and can find them in just about any lava pool. The salamander is an amazing land mount with great kiting potential against melee enemies and yields the great passive of fire resistance. In other words, like the pinky, you can swim in lava while riding a salamander. Unlike pinkies that are aggressive melee mounts, the fact that the salamander inflicts powerful fire damage from a safe range is really useful if you have no other options early game. Because of the mount's potential, it sits comfortably at number 15 on my list. Number 14, the Aeropede. This hidden gem of a land mount is actually the third fastest land mount behind the Ventraptor and Uvoraptor. The Aeropede speed stat in the Bestiary doesn't tell the whole story. This mount moves considerably faster than other mounts while on top of the sand. The mount moves normal speed on every other block, but moves extremely fast on sand. Other mounts may have specific block speeds, but none are more convenient than this, considering how common sand is. Extra speed can make desert combat a cinch. The Aeropedes also launch mudshot projectiles that deal consistent and solid damage, allowing for the option of simple and safe land combat. The Aeropede to me is one of the best land mounts, and I'm surprised I didn't know about the mount before researching info for this top 30 mount list. Number 13, the Zorotar. This land mount is absolutely nuts in terms of protection, and if you wield a rapier in your main hand, the Zorotar is basically just a large layer of protection. You tame Zorotars with dragon treats. While holding the mount ability, the Zorotar takes all the damage for you, protecting you from everything, and even when not using this skill, the Zorotar pretty much takes all the damage for you because of its massive hitbox. The Zorotar makes dungeon clearing and night farming very safe and easy. Number 12, the Ventraptor and Uvaraptor. I was tempted to put these mounts into different categories, but the reason why I love these mounts is just about the same, so I'm gonna put them together. The Ventraptor and the Uvaraptor can be tamed with avian treats, and they are the fastest land mounts by a considerable margin. They spam jump on water super fast and move so fast that your Arlcraft sometimes can't keep up, especially when spam dashing with the Ventraptor. You will go so fast that your game may crash as a result. The Ventraptor is the common poster child of speed in our aircraft, but I actually prefer the Uvaraptor, which is basically a Ventraptor that only spawns in and around jungle biomes. The Uvaraptor's base speed is just as fast as the Ventraptor, except for its F abilities, dash is more of a leap, and the Uvaraptor's passive ability lets it glide like a fancy elytra. Because of this, Uvaraptors actually move through the landscape considerably faster than Ventraptors. Yes, Ventraptors move at game-breaking speeds over the ocean and on flat ground, but on rocky and hilly terrain, the Uvaraptor being able to jump very far and the ability to glide is super useful. As well as the transportation, these mounts also are very useful in combat. Fast speed is deadly in RLcraft and aids with attack speed. These mounts are certainly powerful allies and are arguably more useful than flying mounts in a lot of scenarios. I am a huge fan of the Uvaraptor in particular and was tempted to put these mounts even higher up on the list. I had to try to stay unbiased to my ranking system though. These mounts do not fly and flying is just objectively insane and the best way of exploring safely in RLcraft and exploring is pretty much all you're going to need to do to succeed. It will take a lot to do better than the flying mounts in the game, and only number 4 managed to overcome that hurdle from here on out. Moving on to our top 11. 
The usefulness of flying mounts cannot be contested, and this next flying mount on my list has the potential of being an extremely useful and powerful one. This mount needs no introduction, and that mount is none other than the dragon. This mount can only be obtained by defeating a tier 4 or 5 female dragon in an underground den. You hatch a fire egg by placing it atop a netherrag block and lighting the block on fire. It then takes upwards of 3 in-game days to hatch. The ice dragon egg is hatched when placing it inside a single water block. The water will soon turn to ice around the egg, and again, at the most it will take 3 in-game days to hatch. You then should use a dragon staff to issue commands to the dragon and storing the dragon in a dragon horn for safe keeping. If you do not monitor the dragon when it hatches, it will most likely wander off and die, so be warned. Stay with your dragon. These mounts can be grown with dragon meal, and if not, the dragon will grow one level every in-game day. The dragons are cute when they're small, but they will grow into quite the menaces in time. Dragons are absolutely ludicrous in combat, and at a max 800 HP, the dragons literally demolish other dragons in the world, sea serpents, tower golems, and just about everything else. So, why are dragons only at number 11? Well, on my ranking tier list, they get a low score in practicality. The dragons don't go through doors, can't go with you into dungeons, and you can't attack while on the beast easily since you can damage the dragon yourself and it has a large hitbox. With maxed out items, you can end up killing your dragon rather simply. These dragons are arguably the coolest thing in RLcraft, and their top flying speed is on par with the Amphifier, the fastest flying mount. Dragons are absolutely amazing and are rightfully the cover figure of our Elcraft. But as a mount, they only reach spot 11 since while it is nice that it can kill everything itself, loot and grinding is what you will end up needing more overall, and dragons cannot help you with that. If anything, they will destroy your loot. At number 10, we have The Rock. I can see the RLcraft veterans now wanting to close the video seeing that I ranked the flying turd bird above a dragon, but hear me out on this. Rocks got high marks on my ranking system because they are very useful for transporting villagers, and their small size is very convenient. You tame rocks with avian treats and can find them at night in any temperate Minecraft biome, in other words not in deserts, extreme hills, or cold biomes. Plus, like other flying mounts with carry potential, while wearing earplugs you can always carry a siren into the middle of a village or port city to help drag out all the villagers closer to you. Digging a hole in the middle allowing all the villagers nearby inside of it for easy access trading is more useful than a large lizard that would sooner burn the entire village to the ground because a single zombie accidentally wandered in. Dragons are amazing, but not as practical as other options. Having fun is more important than practicality though in video games, so if your favorite mount is a dragon, I can certainly respect that. Number 9. The Raikou The more convenient version of the rock, the Raikou, also can be tamed with avian treats, and can be found roaming the ocean and ocean coasts. Raikos can also carry and transport villagers and mobs with its mount ability. Raikos move around less, making them more convenient to mount as well compared to rocks. There is not much more to say about the Raiko though, it is literally a more calm rock. Number 8 we have the Beholder. You tame the Beholder with aberration treats, and these mounts can be found in mountainous biomes. While using the Beholder's mount ability may break your eardrums because of how scuffed it is, the Beholder has a good amount of HP and is a stronger flying mount than the aforementioned. The Rock and Raiko can transfer things, sure, but if you mute your audio, this mount is extremely powerful, as its blasts deal considerable damage to enemies, but also structures, so be wary. Number 7. We move up to the Caco Demon. You can find Caco Demons in the Nether, as well as they get summoned in hordes during Stage 3 of the Asmodeus fight. You tame the mount with demon treats. The Caco Demon is a squishier beholder, but its offensive mount ability is much more convenient. It deals good damage and can be rapid fired. Number 6. The Epion. You can find this vampire bat flying mount on full moons, in the end, and during the fight against Amalgalich. This mount has a small hitbox, so fighting on it is very simple. As well as this, while riding the Epion, you can place blocks from further away than when riding other mounts. If you do not have the Ring of the Fairies, the Epion mount can be a wonderful makeshift mount for building purposes. It makes you almost feel like you're in creative mode. The Epion also has a wonderful lifesteal effect that makes them a great ranged fighting mount. Despite the Elite effect, the Epion casting doing very little damage, the fact that you can defeat enemies this way on a flying mount is extremely useful. Number 5. The Quetzodrakal. 
Well, I'm not sure if I said that right. This is by far the strongest of the transporting mounts though. You can tame these strong waverns with dragon treats and they can be found flying above and around oceans. The Quetzodracle has a ton of HP and is very solid for picking up enemies and rendering them useless in a fight. Quetzodracles are the endgame transporting villager mounts and the fact that they can also hold their own in a fight makes them incredibly reliable beasts, much better than their rivals the Raiko and the Rock. Number 4 the only mount in the top 11 that can hold its own as a non-flying mount, the Shade. Now, this ranking may have caught some people by surprise, but the Shade has one of the most insane mount abilities in the entire game. You tame a Shade with Aberration Treats and mount it normally with a saddle. The Shade hits pretty hard and works as a land mount, sure, but more importantly, the Shade casts a massive AoE fear on all enemies around you. And yes, this works on dragons. If you enter a dragon den and fight a tier 5 dragon, you can just activate your mount's ability and the dragon will run from you. You can keep attacking it from range or melee and the dragon will not be able to control its movements making it very hard for it to fight back. This fear effect lasts a long time and the mount ability will be fully recharged before the effect wears off. In other words, infinite fear. And this affects literally every enemy around you. There is no mob limit. If there's 50 zombies around you, those 50 zombies get feared. And the AoE effect is actually pretty far. I'd say spanning about 10-15 blocks or so. This makes fighting large enemies pretty much unfair. Arguably too OP. I'm surprised I didn't know about this cheese tactic until researching stuff for this video. Use this knowledge respectfully and wisely, gamers. And yes, there are still three mounts even stronger than a shade, and these three mounts will make their appearance, starting with the Ignibus at rank 3 overall. The Ignibus is literally a dragon, except for all the faults that make dragons unpractical do not exist for the Ignibus. The Ignibus can be tamed with dragon treats and can be found near extremely large lakes of lava, making the nether the most common place to find them naturally. You can create an artificial lake of lava to increase the spawn rate of the Ignibus, but they are still extremely rare, even from large lava pools. Ignibus are tremendously tanky, starting off with over 500 HP at level 1, making them have the highest HP out of any mount in the game, and they can release flames with its mount ability even better than large dragons can, and these hard-hitting flames can pretty much be fired forever with no downside. With you flying in the air, even with no armor, you are pretty much completely safe. Ignibus are resummonable and convenient flying mounts. Ignibus' flames also only last for a short time, so nothing will be burned down or destroyed. Ignibuses truly are what dragons wish they were. Although, destroying the landscape can also be a nice stress reliever after a hard day, I suppose. Ignibuses can't do that. Number 2. The lovable and sought after, Murak. Being the fastest Lycanite flying mount and being incredibly tanky and hard hitting, it is no wonder the Maroc lands so high up on our list. You tame these Marocs with dragon treats, and they can be found in most biomes at night, but still at a very low chance. A level 10 Maroc can 1v1 a tier 3 dragon even without you holding a weapon in your main hand, and it is just a terror of an offensive weapon while inside a dungeon. The Maroc is the ultimate transportation mount, hits like a truck, and is small and convenient. So which mount could be better than that? Which mount takes the coveted crown as the best mount in all of our craft? Well, by process of elimination, it is pretty obvious. Yep, that is correct. It is none other than the pig with the carrot on a stick, baby! Woo! Let's go watch him go by the ultimate good boy fastest mount possible. Let's go! Woo! Uh, sorry about that. It is none other than the cockatrice, not to be confused by the annoying cockatrice that can be found roaming savanna biomes. The cockatrice is an absolute menace of a mount that paralyzes all enemies it touches for an extended period of time, and it attacks fast as lightning and its attack range is much further than it looks, spanning out 3 or 4 blocks away from the cockatrice. The cockatrice is also incredibly tanky with hundreds of HP, and to top this all off, the mount is a standard flying mount. It can be argued that Marocs are more practical since they are smaller, but cockatrices are extremely clutch for dungeon clearing as long as you teleport it to you into rooms, as it will be too chonky to fit through the doorways. All in all though, the cockatrice is the ultimate menace in terms of attack, defense, and general transportation. The best jack of all trades master of none sits on top of the mount throne. With that, I'm going to wrap up the top 30 mounts in all of our craft. If you disagreed with my rankings, let me know down in the comments below. I read all of them. 
Regardless, I hope you got at least one thing from this video. Have a wonderful day, gamers. Good luck out there. Buh bye bye